Hey everyone, I'm Mark Sargent and this is Flat Earth Q&A emails number 125 where you send your Flat Earth questions to msargent23 at comcast.net that's M-S-A-R-G-E-N-T 23 at comcast.net so let's get right to it first one's called Flat Earth Globe Legend goes all Benny Hill over a cartoon and it's a link to a YouTube video showing Simon Dan. The video is called literally Flat Earth Globe Legend Goes All Benny Hill Over a Cartoon. The channel name is Level Earth Observer and I give it a thumbs up and I'm already subscribed to him. So very cool, thank you for that. I like it when people send me links. This one's called I'm Very Concerned. Mark, I'm a huge fan and I'm a little concerned because I watch behind the curve and I noticed some Masonic stuff going on. I don't know if anyone has brought it up to you yet, but it is there. Please contact his phone number, or I really want to talk to you. I got your number online, but I'm a little nervous and I don't want to bother you. Can you respond in any way? You're the best and I need to discuss this with you. It's very important at your convenience. Thank you, Paul. Uh, yeah, I know there's Masonic stuff uh, in the movie. I, I think they did that deliberately. And one was uh, when they were going through Chris Pontius's models, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, they actually, when when they focused on the one that had the number 33 on it, and don't don't think that was by accident. They were like, okay, we're gonna take some jab at the conspiracy people and see if they react. And I actually, I was surprised that more people didn't uh, comment on that. I thought it was very very interesting. This one's called Don Pettit video. Hey, Mark, my first time writing to you and also highly respect your work. I'm sure you've seen this video where Don Pettit talks about when he is asked what happens in an emergency in the cupola. He says he doesn't know it off the top of his head. What kind of answer is that? Seven holes in the space station, uh, smarter every day. Uh, also, could you update me on your next live show so I can join in and introduce myself as I have a lot of ideas to share with the community. Thank you so much for your time. Love and respect, John Allen. Yeah, uh, in fact, maybe I'll write him back after, after this is over because the next live show is actually tonight. I, I do a live show every night on True Frequency Radio. It's for a couple hours long, four 30-minute segments. And there's calling, and, and I have people call in. You can call in the number. Uh, it's on the screen, and it's on uh, True Frequency Radio. So please, by all means, uh, do call in and, and you want to talk about anything you want. Uh, also, my cell phone number is out there and my secondary number. Uh, the, the cell phone number is 303-494-6631. I know it's a Colorado number because when I wrote the clues, I was in Boulder, Colorado. And then the other number, which is also a Colorado number, is 720-897-6111. And that is my uh, dedicated landline going through Skype number. So there you go. This one's called No Subject. Mr. Sergeant, I am a student in England, and I recently saw you on the Netflix documentary Behind the Curve. You fascinate me. Let's talk. And that's from Arlo. So you know what? I'm going to write him right now, and I know you guys aren't going to hear me that well. I'm going to say, hey, Arlo, what's on your mind? Thanks, Mark. And then I'll include a quick image of the Flat Earth University. And there you go. Ta-da. How was that for fun? Moving on. Let's do, this one's called Questions. Good evening, Mark. I hope that you still use this email. I've always been into asking questions in the world around us, and I've been a skeptic my whole life. Recently, I watched your Netflix documentary about the Flat Earth model. Just so you guys know, it's not... I mean, yes, the Netflix documentary, I am the lead in it, but I did not direct it. I did not produce it. Uh, I didn't... I mean, th that's all I can tell you. I mean, it was directed by all the people that are listed on the screen, and I was just the, the lead subject in it, along with Patricia Steer and Bob Nodell and Jaron Campanella and Chris Pontius. And Nathan Thompson and all the other people. Uh, anyway, so even though it was an interesting look into the community of the Flat Earthers, I didn't get much in terms of evidence supporting such claims. No, it's, it is not a nuts and bolts film. It is a movie about the people, some of the people in Flat Earth during 2017. So I decided to head to YouTube to watch the original Flat Earth Clues video series. But again, all I got was hypothetical stories about how the Globe View may have come about. Not really what I was hoping for. So I did my research and I just wanted to ask one question. What evidence is there to support the Flat Earth model? 
Uh, none. I, I Again, I treat it like a court case. If the flat earth was a court case, could I prove it in a court of law right now? No, I couldn't. Could I generate massive amounts of reasonable doubt in the globe so much to where the only place you have left to turn is the flat earth model or some version of it? Yes, I can. can do that all day long. He ends his email with this. I'm not looking for evidence disproving the globe model or evidence disproving the moon landing or evidence discrediting NASA. I'm seeking simple proof that actually backs up the claim that the earth is a flat disk. Yours sincerely, George Jenkinson. And again, I appreciate emails like that. I've been getting them for four years, but you got to remember if I could prove the flat earth right now, I wouldn't be doing this little podcast thing. I'd be on the cover of Time Magazine and or working for the government in some secret black site. Uh, who knows? What, but no, it's... I mean, I understand the question. I do, but that's the journey. Kind of like, which is, we've been kind of toying with this idea with the, the, the television series anyway. Kind of like Ancient Aliens. Ancient Aliens does not prove that there are aliens every single episode, but it asks the question and it puts it out there at the end. There's a lot of things that lean towards that there's some sort of other civilizations flying around in unified field engine crafts. Does it absolutely prove it? No. But the show, year after year, I mean, how many seasons has that show gone on? So, sorry, not, you're not going not gonna to get proof. Moving on. This one's called The Great Awakening. Mark, there's something I have not heard anyone talk about. They say we spin at 1,000 miles an hour, rotate around the Earth at 67,000 miles an hour, and fly through the galaxy at half a million miles an hour. The fastest the Apollo will go is 25,000 miles an hour, if, if that. Once they break through Earth's atmosphere, wouldn't Earth leave them in the dust? How the hell could they ever catch up with it once you break free from it when it is moving in these ridiculous speeds? Critical thinking, and that's from Tim Hopkins. You are absolutely right, Tim. Uh, and I actually, I've said that many times in, in different things, which is, and the big one is, is the solar, forget about the, the earth rotating and going around the sun. Um, and the, it's the, so, it's the solar system flying sideways. That'll get you because these, these um, Lagrange points, these null gravity points between, again, if you believe in mainstream science between the planetary bodies where gravity absolutely there's 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 nothing nothing pulling it any any which way or form so when a probe gets out into one of these lagrange points the solar system should just like leave them in the dust because the solar system at that point can't pull them anymore unless you're saying oh no the sun's got them really does it does it get them uh it, it'd be like dropping a golf ball outside of a, a car window yeah, the golf ball is going to keep up for a few bounces, but then it's going to lose momentum because the car isn't carrying it anymore. And that's just a golf ball example. I mean, if you're talking about absolute gravitational forces, it'd get way more severe. So, yeah, thank you for that. Great question. Glad, glad you asked it. This one's called Flat Earth. Oh, it's sent to Patricia and me. Hello, Miss Steer and Mr. Sergeant. I like how she gets top billing there, really. Really? That's what you're going to do? I have a couple of questions for you both. I am st still watching the documentary. Wow. He's, he's actually writing while he's watching it. Uh, watching it uh, behind the curve, fairly interesting. However, not convinced at all that the earth is flat. Well, why would you be? The documentary does not prove that the earth is flat. Question one. Have either of you tried to fly to the edge of the flat earth? If Antarctica is, as you say, the well, then you must be able to fly there and prove it. Uh, we have not flown there, no. If the earth is flat, like you say, wouldn't the sun always be shining anywhere and everywhere on the earth and there would never be a night? Uh, that would be the case if the if the sun was 800,000 miles across, uh, if it was this monstrous giant gas ball of, of um, exploding atomic pressures, the, then yes, but it's not. It's a tiny, tiny light in the sky, uh, probably less than 50 miles wide. If it was less than 50 miles wide, you know, put a light bulb out in the distance. Even the brightest light bulb can only shine so far if it's, you know, if it's very, very far away. Question three, if again, the earth was flat and the sun and moon are rotating on this flat plane, wouldn't the moon always be full? Yeah, same thing. Uh, you're saying that the moon is 2000 miles wide and, uh, you know, yeah, if it was a 2000 miles wide object. Yeah, sure. But it's again, very, very small. Thanks for your time, Peter Chesky. Again, we are going to be... I apologize to the uh, the hardcore flat earthers that have listened to a lot of Q&A shows, but we're going to get a lot more of these because of the Netflix uh, blow up, which is if you guys haven't heard by now, you know, even though the, the documentary was on iTunes and Google Play and Amazon Prime and uh, YouTube, 
uh, YouTube movies. I, I had no idea. I had I had heard the rumors. I had always I had always heard the rumors that Netflix had become the biggest production house in Hollywood, and that they had so much money they were buying up projects left and right and outbidding just about everybody on all these cool things. They were becoming this massive. You know, they just made tons and tons and tons of comment. I did not know, however, that. Netflix had such a massive market share, it exceeded even my expectations. So when Behind the Curve came out on Netflix, all these people ended up watching it and simultaneously. And so now we just this big wave of things that are happening to where uh, just recently, just just yesterday afternoon, uh, Newsweek magazine decided they were going to attack Jaron because of uh, his experiment in the movie. And uh, I, I'd like to make him feel better. You know, he's, he's angry because he's going to be on the defensive for a while. But it's like, hey, you know what? Newsweek is attacking you. And that ain't, that ain't, that's, that's not a small player in the game. Newsweek is a very, very big operation when it comes, very well respected. And so uh, if you're going to have somebody attack you, I'd rather have them do it than a lot of other people. Anyway, moving on. This is called Greetings from the UK. Hi, Mark. I'm Dave, 32 years old from Birmingham. I stumbled across your videos about a month ago and have listened to over 50 episodes since, at least one per evening. Anyway, love the show, also love your musical choices in the show, and wondered if you'd do me the honor of featuring one of my band's songs in one of your shows. Here's a nice example. Can't wait to hear from you. Thanks. Okay, I will, you know what, uh, just for you guys, I will click on the link and see what the name of it. It's called Fabrique, F-A-B-R-I-K. The song is called Black Lake. And you know what? I will give it a listen after this is over. I'll put that in my to-do pile and we'll see what we can do. This one's called Pastor Odal Dissing Skiba Now. Pastor Dean Odal has some incredible content regarding the FE. So does Rob Skiba. Odal's most recent video is completely bashing Skiba and his beliefs. And it's so disappointing because I love their work. Also, I've yet to ask and always forget about this time I remembered. May I have the 12 slides, your survival guide, and the Coast to Coast interview? I used to deliver pizza to Art Bell in high school and never knew about his show until I joined the military. We love you, brother. Please never stop your work. I love it way more than Skiba's and Odal's. Oh, that's awfully nice. Yeah, I really wish that. I mean, it's not Skiba's fault. Uh, Rob, Rob is a great guy. And I, I really, really like him. Uh, I don't know. I mean, I understand, you know, one of the side effects of flat earth is enhanced convictions. So if you have biblical convinc convictions already and you get into flat earth, they're, they're highly amplified. And, you know, a lot of people are, are throwing out absolutes, which is if you don't believe in this book and this book and these particular chapters uh, in the Bible, then you will you know, burn in hell. And, and Dean's differs from Rob's. And so he's drawing a line in the sand. And I don't know if that's probably the best thing in the world to do because the Christian community is very well represented in Flat Earth, at least half. And I'm being uh, probably conservative here, but at least half of the Flat Earth community is, are strong Christians. So I, I hope they, they, they patch things up. I really do. Uh, so as far as what he was asking for, yeah, the 12 slides from Just Jack, the survival guide that I wrote called Empty Shelves and the Coast to Coast Interviews, yes, I will send those to you. If anyone else wants them, all you have to do is email me and say it. But you might want to put that in the subject line because he wrote this number of days ago and now I have got to play catch up. So I'll go in my to-do pile. This one's called Flat Earth. Dear Mark, I admire your strong belief in a flat earth. I have been a in a plane once for research we would head to southern america but we flew much further and flew to the edge of the world i could see the huge icebergs that border the world uh-huh okay we're gonna we're gonna keep going with this even though i know he's, he's poking uh luckily we have these icebergs as without the ice of the south pole bordering the world the sea would drain and we would all lose our seas because of what the cosmic waterfalls this summer we will do the same expedition but our goal is to fly beyond the border of the earth and fly around the border to fly under the earth okay i gotta give him points for originality here we want to make videos and photos i have seen a lot of your videos are you interested to use our videos and photos for your youtube documentaries can you please explain me obviously not from this country uh, what will happen when the greenhouse effect will proceed and the ice at, of the South Pole will melt? Do we lose our seas? What do you think of the picture below? Is it true that the Flat Earth believers have a different brain morphology? Oh, wow. 
And can you only see the flat earth when you have a flat brain? Okay, he's going to keep taking shots. You know what? Let's read. We'll finish off the paragraph. I would be highly interested uh, to see a CI scan of your brain. Would that be possible? Imagine that if your brain is flat, the same for other people that believe in flat earth. That would mean that you could see things that other people with other brain morphology cannot see with a CT, oh, CT scan. Uh, of your brain, I haven't, I don't know a lot of doctor terms. Uh, you can wake up millions of people that have a flat brain, but not aware of their unique flat brain. But if he keeps saying it, flat brain is to be proud of. Be proud of your flat brain, Mark. Looking forward to hearing from you. Regards, Brad. Uh huh. Yep, the flat brain society. Uh, awesome. And I noticed, I noticed by the way, Brad, you didn't use your real name in your email, but that's okay. That's that's fine. I don't mind. We're, we're going to take more shots like that before it's over. This one's called Antarctica Circumnavigation. Hi, Mark. I've been following Flat Earth for over a year now. I can say without a doubt that God created us and placed us on a flat plane. That being said, as I was preparing a video of my first Flat Earth vid, I came across this. I did a search of each of the major Flat Earth people and didn't find anything that was on this. First circumnavigation of Antarctica and a sailboat south of the 60th. Uh, let's see, April 5th, 2018, Guinness Book World Records official site with ultimate record-breaking facts and achievements. Do you want to set a world record? Uh, let's see here. I want to do a bio of how I came to believe in Flat Earth. And it started with Admiral Byrd. I started looking for the 60th parallel, and then this showed up. Uh-huh. Using the Asmuthal Equitus and Projection Map 60th Latitude, the distance is approximately 65,193 miles. Uh, or 56,000 nautical, uh, using the same time of 72 days, six hours. That's about 30, about 37 miles an hour or 32 knots. Here's the thing. Their calculations are dead on for the earth being a globe and then traveling at an average of seven miles an hour. This is also cruising speed of the yacht information. Their yacht is the one that is apart from the Rolex Sydney Hobart yacht race. It can only be two things. They are lying. The boat is faster than stated, or they took a different route to simulate the trip. Yeah, uh, they're telling, the, or they're telling the truth, and we are on a globe. Question I have that can be answered by people that are also seafaring: Are there devices on these types of vessels that are like a black box that track where it traveled? Where would that be public record? I don't know. Looking forward to your reply, Bill Moore. I don't. I don't know. Interesting question. Uh, a really interesting question, but I just don't have the answer to that. This one's called Possible Flat Earthers at Little Tree Car Scent Makers. Mark, the photo I took below is of a little tree car scent called True North. I'm thinking to myself when I saw True North that the person that designed it or and or named said scent may be a flat earther or one can hope. Take it easy and what's up? That's from Nathan. And let me take a quick look. I don't think I've seen this shot yet. Yeah, I mean, it says little trees on it, and it says true north down below. Is he a flat earther? Eh, I don't know, maybe. Maybe. It's tough to tell. You know, so many flat earthers in the closet, and they just don't want to go out on that dance floor yet. This one's called an extended invitation to a dear teacher, mentor, and friend. Mark, I hope this email finds you well. I write to extend sincere gratitude for opening my eyes. You have a strong following here at Earlham College. And it would be an honor if you were to serve as our commencement speaker. Start the revolution. Spread the word. See you around, Lily. P.S. Stay flat. You know what? I am very, very flattered. And it looks like it was also sent to maybe an administrator at that school who I will not give the name of. Uh, yeah, if anyone wants me to do a commencement speech, <laughs> uh, my only request is that if you do this, of course, you got to fly me out to it. But uh, you really should talk to the administration. You can't just surprise them with me coming up there, obviously. Uh, but yeah, of course, you know, I, I could tailor a speech to whatever. It's a, if it's a liberal arts college, um, I would be more than happy to. I don't care what university it is. I'd, I'd be happy to. Uh, but uh, if, if they're serious, we'll see. You know, stay tuned. That'd be that'd be really interesting. Who knows? Maybe they'll give me an honorary doctorate. This one's called Wow. Mark, I watched some opposition reviews of Behind the Curve, and they just ripped and shredded you and Patricia and everybody else but me. 
Oh yeah, because this this is this letter is coming from Chris Pontius. If you don't know who he is, if you're watching the documentary, he's the guy that makes the three dimensional flat Earth models. He got off easy. He nothing bad happened to him because he wasn't talking a lot. Most of it was him working with his hands in these really cool montages. So good for you, Chris. Uh, seriously, I was very very happy for you. Hope I hope you find a wife out of this because I know he's looking for one. It's not fair for you to get all the crap. You're like a punching bag for them. They did say it was well done and said to watch it. I thought you were really good in it. Uh, you have a cool mom. I lost mine last year and we were close. I now have two new women in my life. An old friend I used to be with 30 years ago and her daughter is my new helper. Uh, thanks for posting my movie. Uh, between that and the documentary and all the social media, uh, Serena, the one shooting the video, has done the Facebook and Instagram. I have orders for models backlog for the next few months. Awesome. I am going to have to get a bigger factory. Hope the LA show is fun. Wish I could be there. From Chris Pontius. Yeah. Yeah. And um, what can I tell you? It's uh, it, it's going to be an interesting time watching this Netflix thing roll through, and and see you know all the all the different conflicts that it that it creates. But I think overall, again, because I've seen it many times now with different audiences, it plants the seed in people's heads. And so you guys heard me say this all the way back from when it was released back in April of 2017, which I'm sorry, 2018, where I said, look, flat earthers are not going to be huge fans, but you will meet a lot more new flat earthers because of it, because there'd just be a ton of, of new individuals that are going to take a look at it, hopefully objectively. This one's called... Uh, this is kind of a follow-up. Oh, okay. This is the guy that said, I'm very concerned. And he said, there's Masonic stuff in the documentary. So, okay. So here it is. Ready? Um, I uh, want to know why you had your come to moment at three 30 in the morning and why that sea devil, sea devil gave the clock on nine 11 and he was making his 33rd clock at the time of the documentary. Well, no, he wasn't making his 33rd clock, I think. I think it was already done. I'm a real truther, and I see through these lies. Now I want your explanation on this. You say you answer all your emails. Prove it to me, because I don't think you will, because you're creating divide, and we see it's not people's fault. They, it's almost like he's, he's writing this drunk. Uh, people's fault they do that they're programmed to do that but you're getting paid for it we're on to you buddy i want explanation or you're as good as exposed uh what can i tell you i woke up at 3 30 in the morning and uh, to when i wrote the clues it's nothing really weird about it. it just happened that way as far as them showing chris pontius's 33rd model yeah maybe and the the clock was given to the clock on 9 11 just i don't know what to tell you i wasn't there uh, that was that was the uh, the filmmakers and Chris Pontius. I I have never actually been to Chris Pontius's house. We met at the uh, the conference in Raleigh a couple of years ago. So moving on. But please do try to expose me. I if if I can be any more transparent, I I'd, I'd love to know how. Uh, I mean seriously, every description box I have has my physical address, my name. My email address, my phone number, high school, you can look me up. It's not hard to find. Uh, so do, do, what you, do what you can try. Uh, earth is flat. That's the name of this one. Hello, Mark. I wanted to tell you the earth is really flat. I have a friend who works for NASA. He works there for cognitive advantage. He told me that it is flat. The question is, is what, what NASA doing with our money? The answer is gold mining. Mm-hmm. It's simple. If they go out on the media and say the earth is flat and the sky is the limit, we can never get to space. There is no reason they will get any money for their projects. Yeah. It's all about the gold mining. That's why they will never say the earth is flat. Best regards. Uh, no name. And yeah, come on. They're getting $52 million a day. That's a lot. I don't care how rich you are, how wealthy you are. Spending $52 million a day that takes some doing because remember the very next day you got another 52 million dollars i mean it takes a long time i in fact i doubt and, and yeah of course you could say well i'm gonna buy a a hundred million dollar yacht every day or every couple days that would do it it's like yeah but even that the paperwork would take time to do i mean seriously there was a movie with richard pryor uh and i can't remember the name of it you guys are gonna have to help me out i'm not gonna look it up now where that was his challenge. It was spending money. That was one of those cool little early 80s movies, which was the challenge was to spend a certain amount of money in a limited amount of time. It was like 30 days or something like that. 
And if he could do it, then he got a huge amount of money. But if he couldn't do it, he lost everything that he bought. And you're thinking, well, you know, nowadays, inflation would be a lot easier to, to spend that money. But it, but it put in perspective how tough it is if you had a huge bank account to blow it all if you tried. How qu how long would it take you? Because, Mary, where are you going? I mean, you're un unless you're buying huge ch chunks of jewelry or paintings, but even that takes time. There's paperwork involved. Sorry. I don't want to spend too much time on this. It's, it's an interesting thought, though. I just thought the, um, the Richard Pryor movie was, was fascinating, kind of tied to that. This one's called Serious Question. Mark, if you are fully committed to finding the truth and testing possible weaknesses in your Flat Earth model, why not travel over the South Pole? Finding out whether it is possible to do and see with your own eyes would easily test the idea of a wall or whether the globe can be circumnavigated from or to any destination. Simply find out which leg of your Flat Earth model prohibits travel over and test it. Surely. You could convince a large group of ideologically committed people to split the cost of chartering a flight from Buenos Aires, Argentina to Melbourne, Australia or Cape Town, South Africa or Christchurch, New Zealand. If you want to test it up close and personal, you should you could travel Antarct to Antarctica and do a ski expedition. Oh, my God. Crossing the South Pole. It would be heroically involved. Uh, Yeah, and not exactly young anymore, uh, but it's probably achievable with enough effort and willingness to suffer in the cold again if i was 20 uh even then i'd be hesitant uh much more difficult than sitting around at home not putting ideas to the test on a sufficiently large scale but vastly easier and cheaper than orbital space flight then he includes a ps ps you would almost certainly have to charter a flight because there are very few routes that are likely to ever cross antarctica for practical reasons uh very few southern hemisphere cities at low alt low latitudes and safety reasons um, we'd probably need a three to four engine jet. It's easily a 12 to 14 hour flight of high altitude jet speeds, not counting getting to the origin or destination airports at either end. PPS. This guy recently did a ski crossing. Wow, this is totally in this guy's head. In two months. Oh yeah, that guy. You could probably do it more safely with more people, more support, or the aid of snowmobiles, but at a greater expense. If you run out of gas, food, or get hurt, you're in deep trouble. You're not helping me much. Uh, the foundation of any theory is testing good testing. If the tests aren't good enough, the conclusion may be invalid. This test should thoroughly make or break your flat earth model and no amount of conventions, napkin math, YouTube videos, or podcasts can do the same. Hmm. Well, he's got a point in one aspect. But the Antarctic Treaty, well, that's another point, which he probably should look up before he gets too gung-ho about this. This one's called Flat Earth Curious. Hi, Mark. How are you? My name is Kat. I came across one of your first videos, then ended up watching more of them and the documentary on Netflix. I'm not a flat earthist, but I'm very open to the idea and really curious about it all. I was wondering if we could talk some more about it. If so, please let me know. Thank you, Kat. Oh, that's nice. And hopefully she will continue down the path and we'll get her into the Flat Earth Army. This one's called... Ooh, it's a troll letter. Oh, it's a troll letter. Let's do this. Ready? And it's weird because it's a biblical verse starting out. It's called Matthew 6.24, which I don't know by heart. Uh, Mark, how's Metatron going? Have you made enough real money, you and Patricia, selling your applications and video games? I hope so. Is it worth it? That website domain has been bought a long time ago. One day you've come out of nowhere. Strange thing, isn't it? There's a lot of question marks here. When I saw you in that Netflix documentary behind the, th the curve, I thought I was looking at one of the Alex Jones show. It was so obvious. It's not that you resemble him physically, thank God, uh, but you do a damn good job pretending you fight for the truth while your main objective, the one you've been paid, <laughs> yeah, paid by who, is to get people as far as possible from it. Don't fool yourself and don't think you're going to fool all of us. You know exactly what you've done. You've mocked us and ridiculed the truth. Something critical that could awake people for the better. No honest man would have accepted to appear in that film, for one, because it's Netflix, and that's enough to say no. I should probably clarify real fast is that Netflix purchased it long after it was made. In fact, uh, it first went, if it was actually surprising because in April of 20 of last year, 2018 at the Toronto film festival, Netflix was the biggest sponsor and they did not buy it then, but they only bought it much later. Uh, but left to say for the sake of argument, you are an honest man that says he would have at least taken lots of precautions. For example, he would have had someone counter film, what the movie crew was going to film to make sure they were not going to use some editing tricks to manipulate the viewer. That's actually a good tip, believe it or not. And that's a Rob Skiba thing. 
where if anyone's filming him, he records at the very least audio everything that that somebody's filmed. So he can't if he's going to be taken out of context, he can show that to people. Uh, like they did with the ABC interview for him. I mean, actually, he, he, he came out pretty fine, but anyway. In your case, they did not even seem to need ever need to do that because you're willingly accepted to appear in that fake documentary. Okay, it, there's no such thing as a fake documentary. There's a mockumentary which in which people just do tongue-in-cheek and they're, they're making fun of the entire thing. And then there's docu-fiction where they play it absolutely straight. Uh, if you, if any, in fact, the most accusations I've ever heard of the film, that it was a piece of docu-fiction because no one could believe we were actually, we believed in flat earth. And so, but, but no, a fake documentary that doesn't actually, um, exist just, so you know, uh, some passage scenes seem scripted and the things you say, the way you act is good enough for a man without any pre-knowledge of the flat earth theory to think what a big joke. In one of your Flat Earth clues, you said that the elite are hiding God. Yeah, I still believe that. You are right. They are actually hiding God. They don't... They don't people find out... Oh, missing some words here, guy. Uh, that God is real. That life is a test where you have to choose between Satan and Jesus. They don't want that. I doubt you really thought what you've said. you know why? Because when you believe in God, you fear him. You fear the, fear the day you're going to face him and be judged. Uh, for your actions because he knows everything. There's no excuse for what you've done. All the money you'll accumulate won't save your soul on your deathbed. Good luck, anonymous person. I always love that. Oh, I'm sorry. No, he signed it Tupac. The, his, his email is actually Tupac Shakur. I don't think it's really Tupac, just so you know. Uh, and then, of course, I can see in the background it says uh, Stephen something. Just generic Stephen in the number, so it's probably a spoofed thing because trolls are anonymous and he's a coward and he doesn't want to give me his real name i love that throwing rocks from the dark so anyway thanks for the troll email i don't i don't get that many uh often so i i actually enjoy them this one's called don't don't tate d-o-n-t-a-t-e mark thank you for all that you do how would one go about donate <laughs> wow <laughs> donating to your youtube channel thanks for telling the truth joe Okay, if you're going to ask me if you can donate to me, at least spell it right in the title. Uh, it's, it's, it's only six letters. D-O-N-A-T-E, not don't date. Although that's pretty funny. If you don't want to donate, I'll don't date. That's pretty funny. Yeah. He, anyway, okay. So uh, you know me. I don't ask for any money in, and I don't put it in the description. And which is why, way, if you guys know the inside jokes, why way, way, way back when I was doing the clues, I actually said, if you want to send me cookies. And the reason why I said that was so that um, if people want to give me something, it's like, ah, just give me some cookies. I'm fine. You know, buy me a box of Oreos or, or Chips Ahoy or something like that. I'm, I'm a cookie fan. Uh, I don't eat as many uh, for obvious reasons, uh, but I thought that'd be kind of interesting. But yes, if, of course, if you, if you feel so inspired... Uh, my PayPal address, I don't use, use Patreon or any of those other things. My PayPal address is literally the email address that's in the description box. So it's just msargent23 at comcast.net. And of course, of course it's appreciated. I appreciate people sending me emails and people send me phone calls and all the packages I get. And of course, if you want to send me something physical, uh, send any any cool, strange stuff to the, um, the physical address that's in in the uh, description box and that'll come straight to me so there you go <clears throat> this one's called thought immediately of you and it is a image and the image is of what the only thing flat earthers fear is fear itself yep that's a great meme seen it many times very cool Thank you for that. This one's called Just Saying. Mark, people who fought to reestablish flat earth truth in the late 1800s and into the mid 1900s. Uh, Samuel Robotham, Andrea Barnes, Lady Elizabeth Ann Mould Blunt, and William Carpenter. Try to find any information on Andrea Barnes. We, they buried her history so well that it makes one wonder if she ever existed. They don't even mention her on the main Wikipedia modern flat earth society's page because she's committed to uh, the great heresy of traveling to antarctica 
in an attempt to prove the firmament an act that claimed her life and an example they don't want the modern movement to follow. The social architects buried these flat-earth truthers with censorship, disinformation, and zero mention in history books. They form and establish the basis for much of our modern flat-earth research and a public declaration. And that's from Clint. Thank you, Clint. This one's called Challenger Disaster and Flat Earth Question. Hello, Mark. Thank you. While your video series was not the first that I had watched regarding Flat Earth, it was certainly the most eye-opening. I have many questions, but for reasons I am uncertain of, the first one that is stuck in my mind has to do with NASA's shuttle program and more specifically the Challenger disaster. I accept that there exist many people in our world who are morally bankrupt sociopaths, as was evidenced by the events surrounding 9-11. What I'm wondering, however, given the revelation of Flat Earth is this, is it likely that the Challenger disaster would have also a false flag given that the teacher Chris, Krista McAuliffe was on board that particular flight and thus had to be silenced if the status quo was to be maintained. Your thoughts? Thank you for all you and Patricia do. Brian Bodignan. B-O-U-D-I-G-N-O-N. Um, yeah, Challenger disaster. No, no, no. I think it was just a, a, a rocket gone wrong. Again, if you're, if you're going to do a fake space program, you're not going to put astronauts on the top of anything. Definitely not a, a pile of liquid explosives that you're going to set on fire. And so, and rockets will blow up. Look, stuff, bad stuff happens to mechanics. And the question is, if the pilots were never in there, what do you do with them at that point? Uh, you know, put them, witness relocation is actually not a bad idea in the 1980s, especially 1986. Remember, the internet wouldn't be even up and running at all for the next 10 years. So you could put them witness relocation and have them live their normal lives. And most people would never know the difference. And uh, for best I can tell, it worked. So I don't think the teacher was singled out. I, I, in fact, everyone except for the guy that looked older to begin with seemed he, he apparently died of natural causes. Everybody else is still alive, roaming around. Uh, names have slightly changed. So that's what I think. Moving on. Uh, this one's called Forward Mythbusters in Space. They actually accidentally show the Earth is flat. Uh, let me take a quick look at the image. Uh, Miss Buster's on a show where Adam goes to space in the U2. Yeah, 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 the famous U2 thing. The video shows, and Adam talks about the curvature of the Earth, and they show a nice round edge of the Earth, but then the camera cuts back to the Adam, and the horizon is flat. So there's a huge discrepancy in their footage. Also, the first picture of the Earth, where are the stars? I have taken uh, pictures of the moon and can see stars. If you're on the moon and looking at the Earth, wouldn't you see billions of stars? Regards, Daniel Lewis. Absolutely, you would. Yep. Yep, yep, eventually, yeah, and but you can't. You cannot show stars in space, mostly because of the, the date timestamp. Uh, it is, uh, it screws everything up. Remember, uh, the belt of Orion is this giant clock system, and you can tell where the stars are going to be on given, any given night. Uh, the belt of Orion has to be in a certain place at a certain time. And if it is not, and everything's date timestamped, then some nerd is going to find it. Uh, the mathematical calculations that it would be just a nightmare, a logistical nightmare for anybody to set up. So they decide, you know what, we're just not going to do it. Even now, 2019, uh, yeah, you could do it with the computer modeling. It would be tough. Someone's going to make a mistake. I mean, it, that is a lot of calculations you're going to make. So no, you're not going to show any stars in space. Not going to happen. And especially you can't show them now because even if you show them now, people are going to ask, well, why didn't you show them then? It, you got to stay consistent through the entire thing. So if you're ever going to fake, and I haven't seen First Man yet, I really don't want to, but I will if it's free, uh, which is uh, any Hollywood productions that they do now showing the moon have to replicate what they showed in the 60s. Otherwise, people will be asking questions. Why were they so different? Moving on. This one's called Behind the Curve, The Truth. Hi, Mark. Just saw Behind the Curve. Do you know <coughs> Excuse me. the best way to keep a secret between three people? Kill the other two. Yeah, not only do I know that quote, I know who said it. It was Ben Franklin. Humans are horrible at keeping secrets. In order for what you believe to be true, thousands upon thousands of people have been lying for a very long time without the secrets getting out. Not plausible. <laughs> really? Look at the Manhattan Project. That's a perfect example, which is uh, hundreds of thousands of people were working on the atomic bomb program in the United States, but everything was compartmentalized. It was done in three different locations, one here in Washington State, actually, and never got out until the bomb was dropped. And then another one. Then it's like, oh, wow, atomic bombs is the thing, huh? 
Uh, I very much wish for you to be able to take a plane rocket up high enough altitude so you can see it for yourself. Uh -huh. The Earth is not flat. That's all caps, not. Uh, nor is it an oblate spheroid either. Well, that's weird because your actual face of science, Neil deGrasse Tyson, said very clearly in front of a university that it is an oblate spheroid. Um, oh, and then he says, in fact, it's all an illusion, not put on by NASA or any government, but by your mind. Uh, okay, I see here. Have you ever studied Buddhism? All the answers are there. You are, in fact, an energy being. Energy is just an illusion. The reason you feel so strongly about what you do is because intuitively you feel the illusion. You want to pull back the curtain, but the flatter stuff is just a different curtain. Well, yeah, but it's still flat. I'm not saying that it is an illusion, but I am saying that it is flat. And every simulation that we make, unless you're really, really going out of your way, 99% of the, the simulations we make are based on a flat plane. So anyway, so he says, go inward. Oh, and now he's getting all metaphysical. Learn your mind. Learn about samsara and how you are an energy being um, trapped by your own karma and mind. Nirvana is freedom from the illusion. Yes, mo you most certainly are living in the matrix. You can be Neo. I don't really want to be Neo. I'd actually rather be Agent Smith. He, he actually was more influential in that whole thing. Uh, according to equals MC squared, there are over 80,000 Nagasaki bombs of energy in each human being. You can learn to access that energy when you learn to control your mind. Sincerely, Michael W. Thank you, Michael. It's cool. I still think it's flat, and that's the starting point. Uh, but if you want to go to the next level, that's fine. Go, go ahead. Uh, this one's called New Flat Earth 2-Ounce Silver Proof Coin 2019. Hi, Patricia and Mark. I want to share with you a new 2-Ounce Flat Earth Silver Coin, the Power Coin from Italy just recently released, that I'm sure will sell out very quickly with a total mintage of only 500 coins. Power Coin is a private company from Italy that sells coins using smart technology as opposed to what sort of technology? There's another technology besides smart technology that was pioneered by a CIT coin of Liechtenstein and B.H. Meyer Mint of Germany. Power Coin a few weeks ago received the most innovative coin award at the 2019 World Money Fair in Berlin. I did not know that. This is an actual worldwide event that is held in Berlin, and even the U.S. Mint received two awards for their own coins. I consider the Flat Earth Coins by Power Coin as being excellent collectibles with first-rate quality. Yes, I have pre-ordered one as well. Hmm. You know what? They may have to order one of those. It does seem pretty damn cool. And uh, I could I could actually use that in some of my demos. I'm actually fork over. They're not cheap. They're like a couple hundred bucks. But I may actually cave in on that one. Because I, use, I, I drag around this little um, uh, domed thing, but the dome isn't completely clear. And sometimes that throws people. Uh, so I would actually, you know what? You know what? I'm, I'm, I may actually do this. So this one's called Flat Earth Questions. Hello and greetings, Mark. I am for the most part a flat earther. However, I have not had the sufficient answer to these questions and I'm hoping you can answer them for me. If there is an ice wall, then its circumference would be tens of thousands of miles from start to finish. Yeah, I think like 64,000 miles. If you picked a point to measure from, there wouldn't be enough people on the earth to guard it from being approached by anyone. If I sailed east from New Zealand, surely I would find it within a few days. How would you know you're going east from New Zealand? You got to remember the compass is still working in the inside of a flat world and the South Pole, the South compass is not going to help you at all. And if you use the GPS system, the GPS system works for the United States government. It's a Department of Defense military base system, which is actually just a, 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 the Loran system, L-O-R-I-N, with a different wrapper on it. Sorry. Secondly, my country, New Zealand, supposedly has joined the space race with a company called Rocket Lab. As a Kiwi, I find highly unlikely that this company would keep a secret about the dome. Everybody says that about their own people. Well, our own government would keep secrets. We're honest. Those other governments, no, they're dishonest. Our politicians, they're completely above board. Uh, or any rocket company. Come on, man. Uh, it's the same thing. It's like, well, it, we, we always accuse like other fa other people, like well, that that woman's lying. Those kids are lying. That man is lying. Oh no, not my husband, not my wife, not my kids. No, no. Come on, you, you got to Whatever judgment and and um, uh, assumptions you're putting on other people, don't think that it doesn't apply to yours as as well. Everybody seems surprised when one of their own family members does something horrible. Uh, thirdly, the biblical mention that as far as the east is from the west, he has removed our sin from us makes no sense if the earth is flat. 
I look forward to your reply. Regards, Chris Kelly. Oh, you don't even want to start with me on the biblical stuff because uh, look at the story of Joshua, how Joshua held the sun and the moon in the sky for an extra day. How, how does that work on... Uh, on a globe versus a, a flat model because that's just hitting the pause button on a flat model or i don't know my favorite is the tower of babel tower of babel a bridge to heaven where is that going if the earth is rotating and flying around the sun and the galaxy is moving sideways where is that tower going it's going nowhere in in particular because it's all over the place whereas if it's a flat model it's just going to the ceiling that's it. Sorry, it's a, it's a flat earth book. Absolutely, positively. There's only one verse in the Bible that even remotely touches on uh, the shape of the earth. And that is Isaiah 40, 22. He who sitteth upon the circle of the earth. Remember, circle is not three-dimensional. It is also two-dimensional. Circle is not ball. It is not sphere. It is not globe. Your dinner plate is circular. That does not make your dinner plate a globe. Next... This one's called, I would like to collaborate on flat earth projects. Hello, Mark. I would like to say that I am fixated on the flat earth theory, but I am, but I am not. Although becoming trapped within one theory is something many individuals of our modern world are guilty of. I really like to compare such a concept to the system of education where flat earth e theory is grade one and very rarely an individual steps beyond that. I did recently watch the film Beyond the Curve. <laughs> Oh, Beyond the Curve, and he got the name wrong. Behind the Curve. Actually, Beyond the Curve would, would have been better. On Netflix, and I have to say, it was a huge disappointment, for nothing really was said in it. Again, it's not a nuts and bolts film. If you're interested, you really ought to read the descriptions before you read, watch the movies, because the description of the movie was pretty accurate. If you're interested, I'd like to pick your brain about some other theories I have. We can either do it through YouTube or email. It really doesn't matter to me if it's public or private. It is the exchange of information that matters. Best regards, Dimitri. Appreciate Dimitri, but again, and this isn't really much of a cliffhanger uh, email. Don't tell me you've got other ideas and you want to talk about them. Just throw the ideas at me because I get a lot of emails, a lot of phone calls, a lot of texts, and just a lot of stuff. And I can't, there's only so much time in the day. In fact, as I've been reading this, I have four more emails. Uh, all right, moving on. Uh, what what about magnetic pole flips on FE? Hey, Mark, thanks so much for all your work on FE. I contacted you a couple of years ago when I was first looking into FE. And well, what a long, strange trip it's been. Absolutely. But yes, it's flat, it's enclosed, and yet I still have some questions. The main thing that it's seemingly impossible to find anything about is magnetic pole flips on FE. We are in the midst of one, and I think it's going to speed up and actually occur within the next decade, maybe sooner. Yet, though I've been looking for two weeks, I can't find anyone who has an explanation regarding what potential physical effects that might have on a flat earth model other than the flat earth society, and I have learned the wisdom of completely ignoring them. Have you encountered anyone actually working this out on the flat earth community? Thanks for any help you can give, and that's from Doreen. No, when it comes to magnetic pole flips, um, on the flat earth model, it's going to have a, a limited effect because it's a flat model. It's stationary. What's, what's going to happen there? Uh, it's, it's, I can't think of anything that's going to be super de detrimental versus where the globe, who knows what might happen with a globe, uh, all sorts of potential badness there, but on a flat model pole flip, I, that's probably why nobody, nobody's done anything on it. Cause yeah, wh what's it going to do? I, I really don't know if there's going to be much of an impact at all. Moving on. This one's called Flatter Sun and Moon Zodiac Clock. Kid Cootie, Do It Alone Edition. Okay. And it's a link to... And it's Joseph Lynch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Flatter Sun and Moon Zodiac Clock. Do It Alone Edition Mirror. Hmm. All right. I'll take a look. Very cool. This one's called The Flood. Hi, Mark. I've watched your Clue series on YouTube. I wonder, do you think that one force at a certain time let a lot of water fall down from the firmament and cause the legendary The Flood? And that's from BR in Kent. No, wait. BR is... BR. I don't know what that means. But his name's Kent. So... Oh, I'm sorry. So, yeah... How did the flood get caused? Well, it's a lot easier to pull off in an enclosed system than a globe. The flood's a lot e Just everything's easier in a, in a flat enclosed system than it is on a globe. 
tell me, tell me something, globalist. Tell me, email me. Tell me what's easier on a globe. Uh, any any physical thing that's out there. It doesn't have to be biblical, although all the biblical stuff definitely is easier on a on a flat model. So, but yes, I I do believe what you said is possible. Sure, why not? This one's called Hey Mark. When are you coming to Dubai? It's flat here too. And that's from Ahmad. Uh, I'll go to Dubai. If you, any, Anyone that wants a meetup, I am happy to fly out to it. You got to pay my airfare. Because otherwise, you know, people will punk me. It's like, oh, hey, come to Australia. I am going to go to the New Zealand conference. And they are paying me for me to go down there. Uh, picking up my airfare. Uh, but if anyone wants me to come to their meetup, pay. Get me out there. I'd be happy to do it. Including Dubai. I have never been to Dubai. Uh, I've got a friend out there, a pilot, a uh, go figure, that uh, lives in Dubai. I've not seen him in a number of years. It'd be great. This one's called Alternatives for Flat Earth. Mark, in support of Flat Earth, I see that most researchers do not include alternative sources into their work. What I refer to is spiritual sources, not to be confused with religion, mind you. As a spiritualist, I can assure you that the alternative source, there is nothing but data to suggest the Earth is indeed flat. If you see my link below, I've written a book which encompasses a major reason why something would want to create a containment unit. The book is largely beyond the intelligence of most people, but you are welcome to read it. Best of luck, Dave Rivera, hmm. author of Heaven Conspiracy. If I have the time, I will dabble in it. This one's called Interview for YouTube Show. Uh, hello, Mr. Sergeant. My name is Luther Smith. Dr. Lucy Smith, I'm the program director for the Biblical Counseling Department at Calvary University here in Kansas City, Missouri. I was in, uh, emailing you in hopes to extend an invitation on a YouTube show I'm starting titled The Urban Influence. This show is about people who I find interesting and would like to interview about their overall life and some of the things that have influenced them. I've just watched the documentary that was done with you and Patricia Steer on Netflix regarding the Flat Earth Theory. I would like to interview you on not just about Flat Earth, but on who you are as a person, hobbies, inter interests, and where you believe this movement is going in the future. Uh, if you were to agree, I would send you the questions I would ask ahead of time. So no surprises. I really don't mind, by the way, if anyone wants to interview. I rarely even look at the questions uh, that people send me. Uh, I just kind of glance at them uh, because I've been asked so many thousands of questions that and I, I'm, again, trying to be as transparent as I can. I don't care if it's a personal question or a, a question about what ice cream flavor I like. And then he gives his office phone number and so on, so on, and so on. And he's absolutely legit. And I'm going to do the interview next month. So cool. Thanks for that. And again, I remember anyone's probably heard that if I do have an autobiography, it's going to call, be called unsolicited because people just contact me and out of the blue. If anyone and people say, oh, you should be on this show and this show. If anyone wants to send, you know, I'll do any show for the most part. Uh, send my information on my behalf. Feel free. You can you can reach out to any station you want. Say, it'd be great if you had Mark on this show or wouldn't it be interesting to have Mark on the show? Or, it doesn't even have to be me as long as it's a flat earther. Uh, I think it's, I, but I, you know, I've done a whole bunch of interviews, so I'd be happy to do it. Uh, but that also is a warning for people. Don't, don't write me and say, I think you should be on the show. You should re reach out to them. I have learned early on, uh, then when it comes to flat earth, I'm just along for the ride and I'm not to instigate really anything. Uh, so I just let it, let it happen, man. All right. This one's called flat earth clues director's cut. Hey, Mark, I watched your video and it was great. I have nothing bad to say about it. It was well put. I could tell you put a lot of time and effort into it. There is just one thing I'd like you to clarify. You mentioned about the 10 minute mark that it wouldn't be possible to find a direct flight anywhere from Australia going to anywhere in South America. I managed to find, yep, there it is. Sin Sydney to Santiago. It's amazing how many people keep flying the exact same flight. It was always with Cynthia, Sydney to Santiago, Chile. How is that possible? Thank you. And the reason why I don't, and this is from a guy named Marvin, and uh, the reason why I don't write them back is by the time they get to clue seven, and then I had all those people that write me and said, oh, I found like five nonstop flights in the entire Southern Hemisphere, which should raise eyebrows and like, why people didn't, I have no idea. And then I, that's why I did clue nine called The Magic Show. Plain and simple. We'll see what I did there. Plain, uh, but it's spelled different. This one's called Curious About Flat Earth Evidence Points. Hi, Mark. Wondering if you could provide the clear points of evidence on flat earth theory. The specific five to ten evidence points one would use to analytically argue for flat earth's existence. Thank you for your hard work disrupting the norm. Best FE1. 
Got it. And for that, I will send him the five questions that I came up with for the uh, physicist at Georgetown University, which he just did not want to answer. This one's called Distance from Earth to the Dome. Hi, Mark. We chatted on your show last Tuesday about the distance from the Earth to the Dome. You asked me to type up my answer to this and send you in an email and then to those you seem worthy or at least those that would be interested. I have typed up my answer on a PDF, which is attached to this email. I've also made a video on YouTube called Distance from the Earth to the Dome Firmament. Cool. That's from Joseph Roach. He's called in the show a number of times. That's what's called Flat Earth. <laughs> literally one line convince me it doesn't even sign it but it says here that his name is jonathan boyle uh no sorry the burden of proof is on you tell me how you know it's a globe tell me how you know it's a globe and see if you can do it without using nasa and people say well no you have to use a space program or if you if Fine. If, instead of using the word NASA, I'll try to say space program more, so, more often. Tell me how you know it's a globe without using a space program. Because remember, the space programs did not invent the globe in 1972 when the first blue marble shot was taken. So how did you know before 1972 that it was a globe? And then eventually people go to the ships over the horizon. Uh, maybe if you're lucky, you might get a sticks and shadow argument. Most of the time it's ships going over the horizon. And I'd say, yeah, 10 years ago, been right there with you. Digital zoom, HD cameras, not anymore. Ship goes over the horizon. Now you can bring it back into frame. You can keep doing it over and over. And you're saying, what's the point? What's the point is eventually that, that, that ship should be on the other side of the curve. It should be on the other side of the hill. And nothing can see on the other side of a hill, right? Say, so, well, it's an optical illusion. And then we get into the whole thing. The point is, by the time you get that far, the advantage flat earth. Sorry. Uh, this says, uh, oh yeah, this one's called, it says to scan your face. It was great getting to know you better, Mark. Keep up the good work, Chad Taylor. Chad Taylor and I had a chance to spend time together down at the Los Angeles conference. Uh, he brought his book down there. And uh, again, if you believe in synchronicity, not only did we sit next to each other on the panel, but we also got, our seats ended up being right next to each other on the plane back to Seattle. And there's a funny little story, and I'll tell you guys, I'll probably say it on the show, or, but we're, you know, you go through the scanners at the airports, and you have those body scanners, you stand and put your arms up, and it's like a three-second scan. And it comes out, and basically, they, they're looking for anything in your pockets. Everybody forgets stuff in their pockets, and there's different folds and creases in your shirts and pants. And I come out of this thing, right? And normally, I'm, I'm expecting somebody to say, oh, you know, it says to, it says to scan your pocket, or it sends to scan your, your collar, or whatever. And he, this guy looks at me, and he's looking at the screen behind me. He goes, it says to scan your face, but I'm going to let you go. <laughs> it's like, what? It's like, what are you kidding? I wasn't even wearing a hat. It's like, scan my face. Wow, what the heck's going on there? That was just freaky. So, but yeah, that was, that was pretty funny. So that was the inside joke there. So thank you for that, Chad. Uh, you know what? Let's end on this one and we'll, we'll call it good. So, um, uh, cause that one was pretty fun and normally I end on that one, but I'm going to end on this one because this is sent by Brittany. So I don't sell any t-shirts or mugs or anything like that. Uh, you know, again, I just let it happen. Uh, I mean, yeah, the, I didn't even really write my own book. They just transcribed it for me from, from the clues. Um, but, uh, the, the t there is a, a group that I, I let sell t-shirts is on my, from, from strange world. I mean, I put it in the description box if you want to. I am Mark Sargent shirt or Flat Earth Army shirt or any shirt you saw in the documentary. You can you can go to that website. There's a link in the description box of every single video I make. Anyway, that one is run by a woman named Brittany, who is the daughter of the peanut gallery who helps me with the show. And she writes me after I get back from the conference. I don't know why she said this, but the, the title of the email is, and it's very, very short. It's called T-shirts. Mark, hopefully this does not sound too rude, but do you still fit in an extra large Thank you, Brittany. Okay. If I was a woman, I would be like, I'd be like, oh, how dare you? It's like, seriously? So what, are you saying that I gained weight? Because I really haven't gained weight. Or maybe I gained a pound or two. But you know what? I'm getting a new incline set up board. So I'm going to be working on that anyway. So yes, thank you, Brittany. No, I fit into an extra large the same as I fit into an extra large for a long time now. So, but, but thank you. Thank you for asking me. I don't know why she thought this. It's like, what am I, am I, am I double fisting eclairs and Malamar and, and all this other stuff? 
Did, where where are you picking up that that I'm eating a lot recently? Is it a cookies thing? Uh, anyway, that's it. So anyway, uh, thanks for everyone that wrote in. Remember, you can send your questions to msargent23 at comcast.net. That's M-S-A-R-G-E-N-T 23 at comcast.net. Until next time, guys. Stay flat.